very warm welcome to you. I'm Hayley Palmer. Really good to have you here with me on the Memory Lane 80 show this evening, especially as my guest is the one and only John Parr. Yes, here is what happened when I caught up with him. John, it's great to have you on the show. How are you? I'm great, thank you, Hayley. How are you? Yes, I'm really well, thank you. It's such an honour and privilege to have you here on the Memory Lane 80 show. What have you been up to? I know it's been locked down. What's been going on oh, your oh end? Boy. Yeah, I mean, just like everybody else, we kind of hit a brick wall in March. We were in the yeah. studio two days off uh, doing the world tour and uh, got the call and they just fell like dominoes, the shows. Yeah, I know. Well, hopefully they can all come back soon. Fingers crossed. Uh, but I want to rewind how everything all started for you, John, uh, because, I mean, you were playing in the clubs. You couldn't get a record deal. Even your dad said you needed to get a proper job. Is that right? <laughs> Yeah, that, that hurt. My son reckons he just did it to spur me on, but at the time yeah. it was a mortal blow. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's kind of tough, isn't it, when you're getting all those rejections, but everyone did say that you would make it, didn't they? Yeah, I mean, I started as this little kid. When I was in primary school, I used to do right place, put shows on, and then in secondary school had a school band, and the teachers would say, Pa, you're not going to get anywhere. You're always looking out the window, dreaming. <laughs> and then we played the school dance the last day of school and with my band. And they, they all came up and said, forget everything we said. This is what you do. So Yeah, you showed them. Uh, well, I mean, things started taking off for you when you started writing songs. And uh, people started to like your stuff, didn't they? Including Meatloaf. And he flew you out to America and you lived with him. Yeah, I, I signed this little tiny publishing contract for about 500 quid. Lawyer cost 450, the train was 50, I made no money. But yeah. the first, uh, within the first year, they'd sent some of my cassettes, cassettes in those days, sent them out. Yeah. And Meatloaf heard uh, the songs, liked wow. them. And uh, we met up at um, Newcastle City Hall and I gave him three new songs I'd written. Within two weeks, I was in Connecticut living with him and working with him and his band, part of the East Street Band as well. It was life-changing. Yeah, I bet it was. Well, we're going to take a look at Rock and Roll Mercenaries uh, with Meat Life. Now, this is a real great power rock song, isn't it? It's great, and it was shot by the late, great Terry Donovan, who did uh, Addicted to Love, so you might recognise oh. some of the girls. Ah, OK, well, let's check it out. It's from 1986. Enjoy, and we'll see you after.
Now, I want to talk about your song, Naughty Naughty. Uh, now, this is a song that kind of really sort of rose you to fame, wasn't it? Changed everything for me. It was my, uh, my first single. Um, wasn't written at the time of the album. We were, we, were in, um, we were in the studio in Miami at... Um, I've forgotten the name of the studio now, but a uh, very famous studio. And um, yeah. Naughty Naughty was just a, a riff that we would warm up with. And um, Ahmed Erdogan, the great Ahmed Erdogan, who owned Atlantic at the time, said, John, you got to write a song about sex. Sex sells. <laughs> and I got, to, I got to thinking, and uh, that's where Naughty Naughty was born. And Trevor Horn had just come wow. on the scene with all that kind of avant-garde uh, soundscape stuff with the art of noise. So uh, in conjunction with JJ from The Art of Noise, that's how Naughty Naughty was this kind of smashing together of a rock song and this kind of uh, the new digital technology. Yeah, great stuff. Well, Elisa, one of our viewers, wants to know, is the girl in the beginning of the music video from Melrose Place? It's Lisa Renner, yeah. It's like from Housewives it is, yeah. of, uh, of, of um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know, she, yeah, Hollywood Housewives, yeah. Yeah, but she was... Yeah. Uh, you know, why she wore the yellow tights in the video, I have no idea. I mean, that's not sexy, <laughs> is it, you know? <laughs> anything, guys. I don't know anything more about fashion anymore. Uh, but here it is, uh, from 1986. Naughty, naughty, enjoy, and we'll see you after this. <clears throat> now, John, I want to talk to you about St. Elmo's Fire. Um, the story behind this is just incredible. I mean, was it right that you got a call from a record producer, uh, David Foster, saying he was doing a movie and would you be interested in writing a song with him for the movie St. Elmo's Fire? Yeah, that's how it literally, as all these things start with the phone call and I uh, went over and met David. I mean, f I guess everybody knows who he is, but, you know, 20 odd Grammys. He's one of the great producers. Yeah. And um, but when I got there, he was exhausted. He didn't want to write a song. And he said, look, will you sing this? And it was a pretty average song. And I said, yeah, I think we could do better. And he went, man, I'm yeah. too tired. And, and uh, I persuaded him to uh, go in the control room just with a little piano. And we started work and we wrote St. Elmo's really quickly, but couldn't come up with the words. And um, yeah. he showed me. Uh, showed me a video of a, of a young guy who'd been uh, through L.A. Uh, the week before, a guy called Rick Hansen, who yeah. was going on the Man in Motion tour. He'd broken his back and he wanted to raise money and awareness for spinal research. And uh, I went back to the hotel last, that night and I literally wrote his story, I, you know, two years before it happened. But he wheeled 50 miles a day for two years, two days and two months and raised 18 wow. million for spinal research. The song became number one around the world. And we managed yeah. to get Man in Motion past the film company because the deadline was so tight. They never said, why are you calling it brackets? Man in Motion, you know, his world tour. And uh, I think had we had another day, they would have took it off the, off the credits. God. But uh, yeah, the rest history has raised $275 million for Spinal Research, his foundation, with all the great charitable work he's done. But of course, I got to make the video with the, with the sweethearts of the day, with, with Rob and with Demi and Emilio. It was, it was fabulous. <laughs> Yeah, it really was. Well, uh, we've got a question from David, one of our viewers, that wants to know, did you see the movie before you uh, and David Foster wrote the song? Thankfully, no, because there's a scene right. in the film where Demi's really troubled and, and uh, Rob Lowe gets a gas light, a gas tube, and sets fire to it and he goes, it's just St Elmo's fire, it's nothing. Whereas to me, having not seen the film, St. Elmo's Fire was the phenomenon of nature when you see it glowing yeah. in the sky. So in my mind, when I was writing, I saw Rick Hansen wheeling up a mountainside with St. Elmo's Fire glowing in the sky, being the embodiment of his dreams. So I got lucky not seeing the movie. Yeah. Yeah, well, it was 36 years ago uh, that you hit the number one spot on the Billboard Hot 100. Can you believe it's 36 years ago? I like it, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Not yeah. at all, John. I mean, I've Looking got my fabulous. ring light on everything, so hopefully... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like it, he's got um, the tricks going no, on. No, I mean, um, I hear it on the radio still and still sounds yeah. relevant and, you know, people tell me stories of their inspiration from it and, and uh, 
you know, how it, how it energizes them. And so, no, I think, uh, you know, it, it's passed through time pretty unscathed, not like myself. Yeah. Oh, you won't hear of it. Well, uh, it's an incredible song. I've been playing it a lot in lockdown. I absolutely love it. Uh, check out the video and we look forward to seeing you in just a couple of minutes. Now, things really started to take off for you, John, didn't they? Uh, you got a call to go on the Tina Turner private dancer tour. That's just incredible. It was amazing. I actually took the call from Roger Davis. My manager was called John as well. And he went, John, Tina's just heard uh, St. Elmo's on the radio. And she said, I've got to have this guy for the tour. And I think I said, I think you need to speak to my manager. And bang, you know, 40 shows with Tina. Uh, I saw every show. I used to do uh, my, yeah. my warm-up set, wait for the lights to go down. And Tina came on and I'd go back into the crowd and I'd watch. Learning at the knee of the master, she's, uh, she's yeah. one of the greats. Yeah, she really is one of the greats, isn't she? And my dad wants me to ask you about Roger Daltrey as well. Well, with Roger, um, my manager had been with The Who from the 60s. He was actually yeah. a driver for Keith Moon. So I knew every Who story from the thousands of miles on the plane journeys we, we made together. And so I, I just thought um, I'd love to write a tribute to, you know, the incredible drummer and, and uh, enigmatic character he was. So I wrote it and, and sent it to Roger and Roger loved it. And, uh, you know, we sang it together at Madison Square Garden as a duet. It was an incredible night. Wow. Uh, yeah. Yoko Ono and John's sons were on stage with us. It was a magical time for me. And uh, the song became Roger's uh, biggest solo hit ever. Yeah. Yeah, brilliant stuff. And my dad will be happy that I've asked you that. Uh, now, we're going to play out uh, Two Hearts. One of our viewers, Lynn, says that she used to play this in a cassette in her car back in the day. It brings back a lot of memories. It's a great song, isn't it? It was my dad's favourite song. And it was a tough song to ah. write because I was working with uh, Albert Magnoli, who directed the movie. He'd just done Purple Rain with Prince. And uh, he said... Um, I've got this movie, but I don't want any of this crap about making it or we've, we're going to get through. I just want you to write this enigmatic song. Well, I'm all about positivity and we are going to make it. So uh, it was a big challenge, but um, I do think it's one of my best songs. Yeah, we do here on the show. Well, here it is from 1986. Enjoy. And we've got a question from our viewer, Andrea. She says you've had an incredible career. Uh, you've done loads of big TV shows. You've worked with Celine Dion, The Beach Boys, Tina Turner, to name but a few. Uh, what has been your absolute highlight? I know it's hard to pin it down to one thing, but what would you say? Cool. It is tough. Um, <clears throat> boy, oh boy. <laughs> I think uh, playing... Uh, Two, there are two. Uh, playing Rick Hansen's return to Vancouver on the final day of the Man in Motion tour, David Foster and I played in Vancouver, wow. a million people lining the streets, brass bands playing. Da -da 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 -da. It was, you know, to think he started out and there were four men and a dog waving him off, and then two years later, you know, it all changed. So that. And I think playing with Brian Adams, you know, oh, old yeah. pal of mine, I think uh, Brian, I, Brian and I started out together and he'd been around the world doing uh, the Reckless promotion. And he asked me if I'd open for him in Canada on his return. It'd been away two years, God. I think. And so we played the uh, White Sox or Red Sox Stadium in I get, at the Canadian Exhibition Centre, wow. 75,000 wow. people. It was... Uh, it was wild and, uh, yeah, probably those two are the big ones. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're just incredible. Uh, and Sandra says, uh, when you're not making music, what do you like to do? Boy, oh boy. <laughs> um, well, I've got a young grandson these days, uh, so my life's changed dramatically. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, being granddad and, and kind of uh, uh, just being at ground level, you know, yeah. a, a child is just so, uh, they just say anything and everything. And <laughs> it's just at ground level. And I love, I just love that, you know, yeah. that element of life. And it, it takes me back to being a dad, you know, when my two boys were born. And, yeah. and uh, I was lucky enough, you know, I, I, I uh, was able to kind of um, 
you know, spend a lot of time in their lives and, you know, see them turn into men. But it's such a bonus having a little one again. So that's that's fabulous for me. Uh, I've got a puppy, John, and I can just about look after her. She's hard work. She's like a toddler, yeah. honestly. It's, it's well, a full-time got dogs. job. We used to breed dogs, we, so we, we, uh, <laughs> we're dog people. I, I grew oh, up, yeah. Since, since I was a little boy, I've always had a dog with me. So, yeah, I can see that. You know. Yeah, we love animals. Uh, we're going to play out uh, St. Alma's by acoustic version, uh, which is live from the Royal Albert Hall. I didn't think I could love this song anymore, but when I heard this... It just gave me goosebumps. It's just gorgeous, isn't it? Well, God bless you for that. Yeah, you know, um, my dad used to be my manager when I was like 12 in my school band. And um, he used to say to me, you don't need all this gear. You don't need this electric stuff. You should just be sitting on a stool playing your acoustic and telling a few stories. And uh, the Albert Hall was the culmination. And my dad had passed, unfortunately, by that time. Oh, but if you see that. me at the end of that video, I kind of go, you were oh. right, Dad. So yeah. it was, that was probably like, again, my third highlight. Yeah, that, the Albert Hall, I mean, boy, oh, boy. Yeah. I never dreamed yeah. it. Well, it's an absolute masterpiece. Uh, let's check out the video. soldier on You know you can't quit until it's done You know in some way you're a lot like me Just a prisoner and you're trying to break free I can see a new horizon underneath a blazing sky I'll be with the eagles flying higher and higher be a man in motion All I need is these pair of wheels Take me where my future's lying Say the most fire I can hear the music playing I can see the banners 
I want to talk to you about your song NHS Never Surrender, uh, which is a dedication to our NHS. Um, it's just absolutely superb when I heard this. Well, thank you. Yeah, um, yeah the, the song underneath it is a song called A Few Good Men, but it's not sexist, mm. it's about mankind. And I thought it would, I, I just wanted to do something uh, that. You know, we're just musicians, so what can we do? We can say some words and sing them and play some music. And I, I trawled through about 5,000 images of the, of the pandemic uh, in the summertime. Um, so it's a few months ago now. And it was heartrending just going through the images. And then I was just determined to kind of, you know, make people do my own bit to kind of pay tribute to to the doctors and nurses and frontline workers. My mum was a nurse for 30 years. Oh. I owe the NHS so much in my own life. I've had quite a few health things that I've gone through and they've always been there. And so I just yeah. thought with Never Surrender, you know, with the words of Churchill at the front and the back and those images um, was my little bit. And, you know, obviously any, any money donated goes directly to the, to the cause. Uh, but, you know, it's it's tougher than ever isn't it you know and I I saw yeah. something on the six o'clock news last night and saw consultants breaking down you know they left the camera on just that bit too long and the professionalism went and just the human being was left and that's what we're faced with and so so never surrender is is just me as a musician just like I was with St Elmo's Fire and Rick Hansen you know sometimes yeah. your little dream and your little song can catch fire and I just hope that Never Surrender could do that. And uh, even if it just hit one person, make them think, stop, you know, I yeah. won't do this. I'll do what I can to help. I won't I won't yeah. break the rules, you know. So that's just my little go at it. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's a really powerful song. Uh, let's check out the video. We shall fight in the fields. We shall fight in the streets. We shall never surrender. Street. 
Now, John, what's coming up for you next? Obviously, I know we are in a lockdown, but uh, what can we expect uh, moving forward from you? Well, uh, a new record. Um, it's all ready. Well, it's not ready to go. It's ready to mix. I'm really pleased with it. Uh, got some great people on it. Got Kenny Jones from uh, The Faces and The Who, and The Small Faces, of course. Uh, Mark Singer from uh, Wilson Pickett and, and the Isley Brothers. and Some amazing people uh, playing on the record. Um, so I'm really excited about that and a world tour to back it up. That was the plan and they keep budging it. You know, now it's 2022, they're telling me. So that's Aww. my plan. And the other thing is, um, I think really getting to grips with more online things, not necessarily concerts, but yeah. just, uh, maybe playing a few, just the odd song, a little bit of talking, you know, and seeing, you know, getting a bit of interaction because I think this is a new way, isn't it, Haley? You know, we, we just have to uh, it is. embrace it. And I think out of it will come, yeah. um, you know, hopefully a bit more communication for us all, you know, not, you know, because I yeah. find, I, I found it quite impersonal to start with at the beginning of the lockdown doing all these, uh, you know, online things. Yeah. But I think once we break that barrier, the humanity flows through the airways just the same way as it does through the air, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. Well, we're going to uh, now play out with another classic song of yours, John. But thank you so much for taking the time out and coming on the show today. It's been such a pleasure and honour to have you here. Thank you. It's been my and do pleasure. do keep us posted uh, with your tour and your new song. We'd love to hear it. Uh, so thank you so much. It's John Parr, everyone. Thank you. God bless. Oh, just wonderful to have John Parr with us on the show this evening. Huge thank you, John. Just an incredible guest. And to you at home, thank you for supporting the show every single week. It's very much appreciated. Remember, I love hearing from you. Get in contact. Details are on the screen below. I'm Hayley Palmer. We're going to leave you now with some more John Parr. And I will see you same time, same place next week.